Kenya's dairy industry contributes to 14% of the agricultural GDP. The industry is also well known for its successful smallholder dairy development. The establishment of large-scale dairy farms during the colonial period led to the creation of a structure of services such as the Kenya Cooperative Creameries, research institutes and a host of privately owned milk processing plants. It is estimated that 50.6% of Kenyans have no access to adequate food and, even when they do, the little food access is often poor, intermittent and of low nutritional value, this despite the efforts put in place to improve the dairy industry over the years. The widespread adoption of dairy cattle in the country was stimulated by several interacting factors such as the conducive policy and institutional environments provided by successive governments. Smallholder farmers are the major suppliers of raw milk to the dairy cooperative societies in the country and especially in the high potential areas. Most of these farmers have developed special inventions in their dairy farms in an effort to reduce cost of production and increase yields and profits. On today's show, we are going to be featuring a successful small-scale dairy farmer from Kangeta in Igembe Central of Meru County. Mr. Jediel Akula is the proprietor of Rabi Farm. He started dairy farming way back in 2002 with only two heifers, which he received as a wedding present from his parents. My mother is a dairy farmer. She really mentored me into it because she has been teaching us how to milk and how to care for the animals. So after wedding, she gave us two animals. In fact, when I, before even I, I wedding, I had always identified the animal and told her, Mama, I want this one. And she gave me one of the aphas, we used to call her a leader. And uh, I came with it to my home, together with my wife. So we had three animals, two aphas, one bull. They were a real challenge because we got married in August. So the dry spell in this region is quite tight in August. So we were feeding them on the next year and uh, no more banana. Then I mean, really struggled. As I'm a teacher by profession, I would always go to the school and consult uh, with the principal to allow me to take one of the ifas to graze there because I was not able to get some feet. So finally, I even sold one of the ifas. So I was only left with one milking animal. This milking animal uh, gave us uh, good milk. In fact, it hit at 25 and our feeding was relatively poor. But we had some challenges of mastitis because uh, the animal was so much uh, prone to mastitis. So uh, by two or three, I was almost giving up because feeding was a real challenge. Uh, incidentally, one of my colleagues noticed my passion and he told me he would take me to a vet who helped me out to sort out some of this problem was animals. And I went to Dr. Kareni Diakono. She gave me a lecture of three hours on dairy farming. I took notes and she really equipped me. Jadia was then introduced to an agricultural extension officer, Mr. Joshua Kobia, attached to the Meru County Livestock Development and Fisheries Department. Here, he learned how to prepare fodder and feed his dairy cattle. At that time, we were doing a lot of program on HIV and AIDS. So we were having a lot of groups. So I invited them to the groups so they can teach us on issues of dairy feeding. And that's the first time they taught us about storage making. After the, the class of storage making, the next day I went to the farm. I timed when my daughter had been born. I cut all the maize and made the first storage. That was the initial point. Because you know, the, at this area, making of storage and cutting of maize at the right stage was in fact uh, against the customs. You say you would attract a big cast, as if you are showing God you are too satisfied. So I, I, I started that. That became a turning point because feeding was a major problem then. Then uh, in 20, as the years progressed, I had only one animal. I started now building the stock. By 2009, I had around three animals. 2010, I reached around five. The cost of feeding contributes highest to the total cost of milk production. If a cow is kept under zero grazing, feeding needs even more attention as this will entirely depend on how the farmer feeds her. 
A dairy cow requires feed for the following purposes, milk production, body maintenance, her own growth, and the growth of the calf if pregnant. This implies that the cow should receive a ration balanced in energy, protein, and minerals. And balanced ration leads to decreased milk production, poor body condition of the cow, and fertility problems. Good feeding leads to higher milk production, good health, and more calves. However, good quality feeds are expensive. At Rabi Farm, preparation of feeds is very calculated. JDL has trained his farm hands on how to achieve a total mixed ration which consists of silage, green matter chopped together with dry matter. These are then weighed and mixed with concentrates that include maize jam, ground sunflower cake and mineral salts. All these portions are then mixed together and fed to the cows according to its feed and nutritional requirements. Jedia explains just why it is important for dairy farmers to prepare their own concentrates and where he gets his raw materials. Cost of production is one of the major issues as far as dairy farming is, coming, is concerned in Kenya. Because again, the inputs are very expensive. And uh, most of the farmers, they go to the market to buy. If you do that, you are likely not to do it as a business venture. But what you have done is to try to use the available, locally available materials. This is whereby we get uh, raw materials from uh, the neighboring industries where they are processing maize, maize flour. So we get uh, the bran and uh, the maize jam after as a byproduct. So we have even partnered. Once they have through the processing, they just bring it to us. We make our own dairy meal. That cuts the cost. In fact, I'm able to do dairy meal at a very low cost, almost 28 shillings per kg, when in the market is 40. And again, I'm able to give my animals top meal well made, I make with my own and I balance all of them because of course I have a wide experience on this because I visit farms, I see what they are doing, I go into the internet, get more information and that's why I'm able to make dairy. Number two, uh, some feeds within this area are very rich in protein and yet people do not know. So these are some of these uh, plants, like sometimes Bakkari was doing some research and they give us some input through the extension officers that some of our local, like what we call jahe has very good nutrition. So I normally plant jahe not for people, but for my animals. And the beauty about jahe is that you, uh, they have a very high percentage of protein. And uh, they, they do not become hard. When you are growing this crop, we can start feeding them from June up to September, straight from the farm. One acre can serve almost these animals for three months. Because a small bit of it, instead of using the lucerne and other inputs from far, we just grow it locally. I've also grown mine here for the same purpose, so that you can incorporate that. We also use others called Mianjela and other local. One thing I realized, what the dairy goat loves here, because you have not dairy goats here, you have normal goats in the KNH, what they love is usually very rich in protein. In the high potential areas, the economic importance of the cow has increasingly shifted to commercial milk production, while at the same time retaining the complementary role of sustaining soil fertility for sustainable agricultural production. In such areas, increasing population pressure interacting with the need to sustain soil fertility has driven the change in production structure with dairy becoming an important component of agricultural production. Jediel uses the cow dung swept from the sheds as manure in his farm and the results are evident. The crops in his farm seem very healthy and are organically grown. Different dairy farmers we have visited have constructed different designs for their cow sheds. There is no one particular design required in housing dairy cows. Some of the necessary requirements include good aeration and good drainage. A dairy shed has three distinct areas. The resting and sleeping cubicle or compartment, the cattle walking or manure places, the cattle forage, feeding and watering place. JDL recommends to would-be dairy farmers or those planning to expand their ventures to visit different farms. Here, they can get to learn or see various cow shed designs and implement them in their own farms. Yeah, this one first I got it from visiting other farms. There's a farm we visited in, uh, I don't know, I think it's not far from, Tasso's farm in, uh, in, in Ruiro. They are, uh, we went there for structure and learning and see what they are doing. We saw what they are doing and also 
we got that. First I saw the high roof and the other areas in areas, uh, when we had a Brookside show, we saw some of the stands and we got the view on how. Then uh, we borrowed that, then we incorporated the whole technology here. By the way, it's a very important part in dairy farming. With the wrong unit, we'll have a lot of issues. Uh, sometimes we may lose our, a good animal because of a poor flow. And we are changing every time. We have even realized uh, Cabros is one of the best in using on this. And this is because we are visiting farms. So visiting several farms, you see what other people are doing. Education is a continuous process. Yeah. It is also wise to consider things like availability of raw materials before embarking on construction of your cow shed. Some designs are also capital intensive. At Rabi Farm, you will notice that water troughs are automated. This, according to JDL, saves water and maintains hygiene. This design has also reduced cases of mortality. Mortality has been there. I had a problem with the hardware disease. The lot was caused by using of uh, timber, and I eliminated timber from my, you can see we are using metal. Making the unit avoid a lot of timber because uh, there are a lot of nails. And when people are repairing, vijana wakitengeneza inaruka inaingia wapi? Ochakula. So you risk the animals. But when you have used uh, metallic, you are okay. He has also invested in cow mattresses in the resting cubicles. You may also have noticed some hay spread at the entrance of the shed. This has been dampened with a disinfectant as a protective measure to prevent the spread of infectious diseases from outside. Hygiene is key when it comes to prevention of pests and diseases in dairy farms. JDL's journey in this venture has had its fair share of challenges. He has suffered huge losses in the past due to cow mortality, but these he says have reduced especially after the intervention of extension officers through vaccinations. I, over the years I've been losing animals. Mostly it was hardware, the other one was normal accidents. Maybe they are, they, they are come on heat in Arukia and Guinea. It has been a real issue. But we have done vaccination, that's where now the extension officers have done their job. In fact, they even update us every time. They tell us we are having this, let's go and vaccinate. And we have done vaccination routinely. Uh, now, I embraced insurance last year. And in fact, I insured all the animals. But the challenge came with insurance people in Kenya, I think, allow me to give my opinion from that experience, is that they don't seem to work. Because if we insured the animal, the animal dies of a, a cause that is easily understandable. We write a report and then they will come around the corner and tell you many issues and you see now they are not ready to pay. So for payment it's easy, but when it comes to paying the farmer, it becomes a real challenge. That's an area that I think the cooperative societies can come in. They start their own insurance to cover. The way the circles have done, like if you look at the circles, like the teacher's circle, when their members have a problem, they will understand the problem. Even, uh, even if you have an issue of even death, they will come in and sort out that. So if you start a cooperative they, and their own insurance is covering the farmers, they understand the farmer than the business people who are just wondering on figures and status. They are changing their benchmark. Every time they tell you, look at this, you didn't tell us the right post-mortem records, we send another one. The report seems to differ, you know, it's a way of escaping liability. So basics of, <laughs> of insurance. To me, have not worked of late. Seems as if they may, be, they may have some issues that they are, they are not able to pay. So they will cut corners, they bring, change goalposts. Ukitaka karibu kufunga, na bandilisha ngoli.